Hello everyone. Can we shoot dragonflies in flight with the Sony A1 and the 135mm f1.8 G Master lens? So I must thank Camera Prepper for this idea um, because he commented on one of my videos on dragonflies and um, he said that he used the A7R4, the Sony A7R4 with the 135 and um, got superb results. So I thought I'd give it a go and uh, that's why we're doing this today. So having done a video using my longest fixed focal length, the 600mm with dragonflies, I thought we'd try one with the much shorter, much lighter, easier to handle 135. So my favourite system is using the 1 to 400 with the Sony A1. Today I've got it mounted on the A92 but uh, still a superb combination for dragonflies in flight. So this system is tried and tested. We recommend this one. But why use the 135? Well it's extremely fast. The autofocus on this uses two linear motors exactly the same as the 600mm and uh, ooh, it's very quick to focus in. In these overcast conditions f1.8 is a distinct advantage. I mean we won't actually use it wide open at f1.8 um, to let in more light but uh, we'll stop it down a bit but it's still very very useful. So the 135 f1.8 focuses has a minimum focusing distance of 0.770 centimeters so we'll be setting the focus limiter on this between 70 centimeters and 2 meters for amazing autofocus capability. And with the shallow depth of field we really hope to isolate the subject because at this time of year the pond gets quite messy. The 135 system weighs in at 1.8 kilos. Still not totally lightweight because there's a lot of glass in the 135. But the 100 to 400 system with the body weighs in at 2.4 kilos. So there's about a quarter difference in weight saving. So uh, yeah, useful if you're carrying it around all day. So my main concern with the 135 is can you get in close enough? Will the dragonflies come close enough? Because I know the reach on the 1 to 400 I can get within ooh, a meter of the subjects. But at this time of year the dragonflies can come really close. So the idea today with the 135 is to get a frame filling shot of a dragonfly in flight. Let's see what we can get. So the tactics for today are basically patience, um, sit and wait. The dragonflies are coming close to us so uh, yeah it's really good. So we just sit and wait in the one area and uh, we're focusing over the pond just over the top of the uh, reed heads and um, we've limited the focus on the lens barrel to within 70 centimeters to two meters so we're only interested in a dragonfly that comes really close because we can't focus on anything else and then I've set zone single spot tracking focus on the A1 and uh, yeah auto ISO because again we don't know the varying contrast between the sunshine areas and the uh, darker areas too vast to calculate varying between ISO 800 and 1600 and we're shooting f2.8 to f4 um, using some of the advantage of the 135 so I've got the uh, 135 on the monopod. It still weighs 1.8 kilograms, this setup. 
So if you're going to be in this position for a long time, you want some sort of support. So this monopod with the L10 flexible head gives me very manoeuvrable action in all directions. Superb. And then we just locate our subject, focus somewhere on the vegetation below where we think it's going to go. And then when one comes in, we just focus in on it and uh, fire away. We're shooting bursts in high mode, which is uh, I think 15 frames per second, 10 to 15 frames per second, because um, we don't want 30 pictures of the same subject. Well, I don't. I could do, but we're shooting. We're being modest on this one. Well, coffee break. Whew. One of my two cups of coffee a day now. The new regime. Well, this is a case, folks, of, uh, well, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, take the shot anyway. Get the shot. I'll play the video now of the dragonfly and see if you can make out what it is. Awesome. Yeah, so I've just had a dog walker in, a local, and uh, pointed to a dragonfly I hadn't spotted. So, uh, yeah, link to another dragonfly I hadn't spotted. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so it's not easy, the little blighters. Ooh, they're pretty quick, in and out. But they do hover for quite a while in one spot. So you have got a chance to get in on them. Focus in, amazing. Yeah, so we're on uh, F2 at the moment, drop down to F2. Um, one five hundredth of a second, because uh, the light level, we're still quite early in the morning. And the uh, light level's still quite low, giving us or oh, ISO 320. Oh, I've got one now. Yep. Just beyond the two metre range. So I uh, couldn't quite get that one. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to wait until the dragonfly comes in really close. Um, not sure what dragonflies we're photographing here. Um, as usual on Camilla and I, it's the subject we're interested in, not necessarily what type of dragonfly it is. It's either a southern hawker or emperor dragonfly. It's a very nice green one, which I haven't identified yet, but hopefully we'll get a picture of that, and then we can identify it later when we've got the shot in the bag. Oh, nearly. Oh, nearly got a good shot then. Now, the, uh, they often meet up with another one and dash around the pond on a quick mating frenzy so uh, and i have seen one already coupled in flight uh, quite spectacular but i didn't want able to photograph that so darn it i'm still using the bird eye auto detect as well um i don't know whether animal or um or human would make any difference but uh, yeah i'm still using bird eye autofocus and it does seem to hone in on the dragonfly's uh, big eyes. Actually step back a yard as uh, it keeps coming within 50 centimetres of me and I keep missing the shot. Oh. Yeah, sometimes it's not always easy getting the shot. Yeah, so it's forecast to get really hot today. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. So it'll probably just be a couple of hour session at the pond today.
Well, what a beautiful day here at King Charles Pond, Blackmore Copse. An absolute killer day. And we used a killer combination, the Sony A1 with the 135mm f1.8 G Master lens. And uh, did we get the results? Well, you decide. Let me know in the comments below if you like the shots taken with this combination. Personally, I would, if I was using one combination only, I would definitely stick with the 100 to 400 for ultimate flexibility. And uh, indeed, I got some good shots, static shots with the 100 to 400, which I don't think I would have got with this purely because of reach. But uh, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this episode of Camilla and I. Don't forget, usual like, comment, subscribe. Anyway, have a good one. Bye from. Camilla and I.